Renting in Toronto is very expensive. A one bedroom place is usually about $26, $2,700 a month on average. That's like $32,000 a year in rent. I don't even make that much in a year. So the only way that I can afford to live in Toronto is by renting a private room and the shared spaces that go with it. But how much does this type of deal typically cost? And is it worth it? So today, let's take a look at my living situation and figure that out. So my room I'm talking about today is located in the Trinity Bellwoods neighborhood. That's just west of the downtown core. It's the land of quaint coffee shops and Parisian pastries. It's quite a safe neighborhood with some condos and lots of houses that often look like this. Now in one particular house, you'll find my sunlit room. It's only about a hundred square feet, but let's squeeze inside now and take a look around. That's a queen size bed there and it fits just fine. There's my desk where I'd like to do work more, but I'm pretty underemployed at the moment. That's my second chair should someone choose to come visit me one day. And behind the chair you can see where I keep some of my storage. So how much does a room like this go for in downtown Toronto? Well, hold on, because I just don't get the room. I also get a private washroom, which is pretty rare in a shared house in Toronto. It gives me some extra storage space, which I need pretty badly. And there's the standard stuff that you'll find here. Uh, this is not in the best condition, but it could be worse, and at least I have some control of this space now. Now, if we go downstairs here and through the hallway where some people store their bikes, we arrive at the shared kitchen. And it's not a great kitchen. I mean, it's spacious and has lots of cupboards, but it's really not very clean. It's, it's dirty, actually. When you share a space, you really have limited control over that environment. Also, I'm not even showing the floors yet, but people don't even take their shoes off to come in here for God, God knows what the reason is. Finally, we arrive at the garbage recycling area. And yesterday, for the very first time, I saw a mouse here. And it scurried underneath that kitchen table, and I texted my landlord who has set up this mouse trap. God, this kitchen is the worst part of this house. I just try to accept it and spend as little time as possible here. So that's the private room and the private washroom and the shared living spaces for my place in Trinity Bellwoods. So how much does this cost me a month? Well, it costs $760 a month, although it's soon going to go up to $780 uh, because landlords can increase your rent every year if they choose to, although only by a certain amount. Now, my landlord has tried to raise my rent outside of these legal parameters a, a few times, so you have to sometimes push back because they may try to take advantage of you here in Toronto, so you have to know your rights. Now, what does this $780 include? It includes all utilities, that means heating, water, electricity. It also includes air conditioning. Although the air conditioning is not the greatest, hence why I also have a fan in my room. Finally, it also includes the internet. The internet is usually good enough, but it can be spotty at times. Now, what's not included? Well, first, there's no laundry. There's no laundry in the unit. But there are some cheap options nearby, cheap laundry mats, so it's not that big of a deal. There's also no living room. So it does lack 
that sort of homey vibe that you'd get uh, in other houses that you're just not going to get in a shared house. Your room becomes your home, for better or worse. So is that $760 or $780 a month worth it for me? Um, <laughs> at this point, I'd have to say yes. Um, but that's mainly because I'm so underemployed at the moment uh, that if I couldn't have this place, I mean, I don't know where else I would go if I still wanted or needed to live uh, in Toronto. Now, the one thing I haven't mentioned here is that one of the biggest things about living with other people is that you are living with other people. And that can sometimes be quite troublesome in every single house. I think I've lived in every single shared house I've lived in. They have had problems. Um, you know, people are doing things that are interfering with my own enjoyment of the place. Um, this particular location, you know, there was uh, a family that like moved into one room and they were very loud and um, lowering my voice now. I don't want them to hear me. You know, but, you know, they would scream sometimes, there was shouting matches, uh, you know, there was cleanliness problems, you know, there's just... So it can be, it can be a headache living with other people, and sometimes you gotta go to your landlord and try to straighten things out. Um, so that can be a problem, um, although for the most part in this particular house now, it's mostly been sorted out, so it's not so bad now. Um, but certainly you don't have control of that environment that you you'd have if you had your own place but if you want your own place then you have to pay that premium price point here in toronto that for me i simply cannot afford at the moment now if you happen to be looking for a room in toronto right now or a place in toronto this room probably is a pretty typical uh situation if you are looking for a room places you can look that might be good resources uh, would include like basic websites here like kijiji or craigslist or you just google rooms and shares and there you'll be able to find a more comprehensive listing of uh, the rooms that are available here in toronto and you definitely want to go visit these rooms physically before you rent them and hopefully uh, talk to the other people that live there so you can kind of get a sense of the other people that are living there whether it might be a good fit for you also, you can potentially negotiate your rent and talk the landlord, hopefully, down a bit. Uh, personally, I should have done that, but in real life, I am just a little too uh, timid and mouse-like. Maybe next time. One final thing I'll say is that, obviously, if you shell out more money, you can probably get a better room in common area than I have. And I think the average price for a room in Toronto is about a thousand dollars i should have said that earlier god knows what i'm doing well that about wraps it up uh, please consider subscribing for more information on how to get by in canada please join me next week where we learn how to ride the toronto streetcar for free see you then